Stephanie Bocciatum, and here we are on Purpose in Focus, where we'll be discussing your career opportunities, speaking on people's passions, interests, experience, and skills that led them to be the person that they are today. And so today we have my girl, my sister, my love, Salome and Sia. She'll be discussing her career journey that brought her to be the person she is today. She's a trained chef with experience in culinary arts of Ghanaian cuisine, African American cuisine, Caribbean cuisine, cuisine sorry, and even um, um, Asian cuisine. So here we have Salome, my girl. Thank Hello. you for being here Thank today. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm good. Good. I hope you're not too nervous. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm not good with like right in front of the camera. But that's okay. Yeah. I know your personality will come through. And that's what oh. matters most. Yeah. So let's get into it. Um, so I know that you, you've been a chef for some time and it has really sparked my interest. I'm really happy that you are where you are. And we're all our, all of our bellies are happy too. <laughs> and you've been one of my most support. She's like, she's always supported me through the whole process. So yeah. And it's only because she has come so far. And you guys will have the opportunity to hear that today. So let's start off from way back. When is your first experience of being in the kitchen? Um, I would say, like, that I remember personally, probably I can't really remember because I was really young, but oh, in terms of, like, great. pictures or photos, evidence, maybe, like, six to eight months old. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I never spared it. I know. But more of, like, the eating. I love food. I love eating. So I was even, like, really chubby as a baby. Like, you know, on the verge of going on a diet. And, you know? <laughs> exactly so right that's my first memory. memory, like, for sure, in the kitchen or around food. Mm -hmm. And, like... I was there's a picture where I'm like six months old sitting on my mom's lap and she's eating like full plate of food and we're both eating together like her oh, hands in so it cute. so you can see our faces and I'm just like there's food like and I'm just like we're both eating it's like how can this little baby be eating mm -hmm. all oh, these exactly. solids yeah mm -hmm. so that's what I knew so that's yeah. great so do you remember when you first cooked your own meal um yes <laughs> yes not did really. it go too well <laughs> It, it didn't really go too well, but you know what? Um, my mom really instilled in my sister and, us, and, and I to be very independent. So, like, okay. from, like, five or six years old, she let us fry our first egg and, like, oh, make, so like, cut our first onion or make our first stew. So, like, I was, you know, we were doing that. Big and, stuff. like, you know, it was okay when they just wanted a fried egg or something. But mm -hmm. when you're making stew... It's a different story. Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom used to encourage me and say... Tip, don't use white pepper. <laughs> No. Write that down, guys. Like her first chef because herself. it made my stew smell like a farmhouse. Like it was really <laughs> bad. I put so much thinking I was like chefing it. Yeah, <laughs> right. At least yeah. yeah. Oh, eventually I was chefing it, but not mm -hmm. then. Exactly. Know? So yeah. it took some time. Yeah. Did you go to any camps or anything, or was it just your mom instilling that in you? Um, no. The whole food thing, honestly, was not the primary like okay. where I was gonna go kind of thing. So you tell know? us more about that. What were you? What did you have in mind? Um. Well, when I was like a little kid, everybody was like because I was so outspoken and mm -hmm. assertive. They thought you'd be a lawyer. I mean, exactly. <laughs> I knew it. You know. And honestly, I really wanted to do it. And oh. then the other half of my family thought I was going to be a pediatrician because I love babies. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. That's where we started out in the nursery. In the nursery, in volunteering, the taking care of babies in the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. So because of that, I made that oh, she's going to be a pediatrician. And I love mm -hmm. my personal, like my pediatrician. Like she was oh, Dr. Bano. She was amazing. She like okay, shout out to raised Dr. Bano. Us. Yeah. So <laughs> she kind of raised us. So, um, but then like I always loved food, just eating it. I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about cooking it or being right. a chef. I just loved just eating. Love eating. Like, I have an obsession. <laughs> With food, um, so that was it, and yeah, so and yeah, I was supposed to be there, but then when I see it was like a 10 year process to be a lawyer mm -hmm. and then do pro bono and all that stuff, and like it's I'll be like 40 something before I could really enjoy the money. I was like, right. enjoy the money, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I actually want to like, yeah, it's good money, but I just mm -hmm. didn't have the patience. patience. I feel you too, like, I think about the fact that I would have to be 29 or so, I yeah, guess, and I just don't have that time, like, yeah. literally, maybe a year from now would be when I'd start even working mm -hmm. and that's in someone else's firm and like trying to yeah, make some money exactly and, and it'll be being on a team you know versus and observing versus actually like being a lawyer exactly. it takes a process you yeah. know so if you have the patience guys go for it but yeah i don't so uh, <laughs> i have patience for certain things like you know but not that so i mean i respect to all my lawyers and like mm -hmm. so for sure but yeah so not forgotten <laughs> yeah you know so when did you start to zone in on being a chef um, 
I always, okay, high school, mm -hmm. when they're like, figure out what you want to do, mm -hmm. who you want to be, all that kind of stuff. Big questions. Yeah, exactly. I was not, I definitely did not know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was good at. I knew I was good at being part of volunteering. So I knew like okay. peer work or like um, student council. Love and like, that. you Love know what it. I mean? Doing mm -hmm. like this, the, the camps with like the younger grades, like when you're like in grade 11 or 12 and then taking grade nine, mm -hmm. you know, nine, doing those kind of like, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, I knew like, oh, I would definitely be good with like social work okay. or like some kind of like therapist or something like that. So I wanted to go in that route, but I knew that's something that I could do, but not something I wanted or like was really in love with. And I'm glad you say that. You know what I mean? And I knew that from very early, but because my household was a very like, my mom's a teacher, mm -hmm. you know that. She's yes. an educator. Like, exactly. Very... Yes. You know, so no one could be in her house and not go to school. Like, there's no <laughs> problem. Yeah, there's no way. I'm like, I'm taking a year off after high school, mom. I'm gonna work and figure out, figure myself out. It's like she, she won't come. No, it's not gonna work out with her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So basically, like, um, I just kind of did it. I got in. I got into Ryerson for social work. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You, you know, you so know that's how we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, I still wear all my hoodies, my sweaters. It's been love way it. over five years. Yes. <laughs> I'm in love with I love Ryerson for what it was for me at the time, mm -hmm. but I did not stay or finish because it was just not like I like I knew it was not for me. Um but yeah, so long story short, basically, um high school I just applied, I got in and then I did it for about two and or so years. Okay, just enough time to know. Yeah, to know, like, mm -hmm. you know. And I just knew I had biases, and as a social worker, mm -hmm. yes, you may have biases, but you can't let them be active biases. Exactly. If you're actually, like, taught that. So for me, it's like, I knew that I wouldn't be unbiased if I was dealing with a same-sex couple. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? An abuse situation where a man and a woman, abuse situation, I would see the man as the aggressor, but then mm -hmm. in a same-sex couple, you have to see one or the other, and I'd see them either as two men. So it's like, oh, well, they're just kind of roughing it out. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that is very sensitive with social work. Mm -hmm. I'm very sensitive to children and, like, going into homes and removing children. And mm -hmm. I just knew That's that if it was a child abuse situation, I'd want to, like, get personal uh, not to get personal That's and not to get home and I wanted to have a job that could clock out and still love mm -hmm. right or you leave your work at work leave your work and you know what shout out to all the social workers because I still have my girls around me like that I went to school with we oh, still have a very tight-knit sister group we still see each other at least twice a year um we try to do Kris Kringle and all that kind of stuff and they're amazing social workers are all in different places mm -hmm. some is in uh, mental health some is in uh, C CCAS, uh, child services, mm -hmm. some are in schools, some are in the hospital, so like, I just want to shout out to them. It's an amazing career, Definitely. but I just knew that's just, you Definitely. know, it wasn't, it, it was something that I could be good at, but like my heart was in it, but I didn't have the patience for Definitely. it, you know? Yeah. And that's good that you recognize that because people just say, what else am I going to do? But that's really hard mm -hmm. because for us, like you and I, we grew up in like a Ghanaian culture at home mm -hmm. and exactly. like our won't accept that. So it was a hard acceptance for parents have these expectations or where they see us being and like where we're going. Mm -hmm. So like we do things to please them. And exactly. We do things just because they say like, because you know it's going to keep the peace. And then eventually mm -hmm. it ends up being worse because you just sort of did what you knew in your heart and in your in your spirit you should have done the first time. Exactly. They would get over it. They would exactly. get over it. You know, so. That's right. One of my favorites. Um, recent comedians his name is jimmy o yang from crazy rich asians yeah you know yeah. great movie love him I love so that movie funny. it's hilarious so <laughs> i was listening to what got him into comedy and he said like just like his his parents also they asian culture they want you to be that doctor lawyer mm -hmm. here. Yep. and so he told himself Ours you know nurse nurse or lawyer. Or lawyer or doctor doctor or, yeah but he was saying like he knew that he wanted to be a comedian and he'd rather disappoint his parents for just a year or a couple years than himself for a lifetime. And that really stuck with me. Like What? He's that, preaching. Like that's I thought it. about that. Yeah. I mean I wish I wish even though like you always give me praise for saying like, Yo, you did this and like, you know, like I want you to like, you know, that's really cool that you did that and you like followed yeah. your heart, your your passion and didn't listen to like, you know, your parents, your parents and stuff. Are, I'm not stop you. But like I wish I still did it earlier. Yeah, you know what I mean. Going back Even though I did it, and like people were like, first it was hard, and now my parents are my biggest cheerleaders. You'd be mm -hmm. surprised. Like they're your biggest cheerleaders, and once you're thriving in what you're good at, they will be mm -hmm. the ones really like, oh, that's my kid, that's exactly. my daughter. They'll be bragging. So, Yo, but <laughs> you know? but like what he mm -hmm. said about just let disappoint them for a year or so. Mm -hmm. My dad disowned me for about a year, my because he put money into the social work. So it was like, mm -hmm. 
Where's my return? I, exactly. invest, I invested in this. I need a quick. You want to go through this trash job? He called it trash. Oh. He wanted to do cooking at I'm first, sorry. yeah. But like then when I was traveling with it and stuff, he was like, "Oh my daughter, she's yeah, doing daughter. this, calling everyone." Mm-hmm. Disappoint them for the year exactly. and do what you know you need to do for mm-hmm. yourself. At the end of the day, you're gonna have to wake up and do that nine exactly. to five. You're gonna have to it's gonna be that your job. Your time. Yes, it's gonna be your life, not your parents that have to actually work it or live it. Exactly. Yes, they'll be disappointed, but when they see you thriving in what you're good at, they'll mm-hmm. even be more proud. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's what and I mean. when you thrive in what you're doing, what you're good at, what you're passionate in. You have more time to, like, spend with others in a mm-hmm. in a better, healthier energy. You know what I mean? Like, I was more mm-hmm. miserable when I was in university. Mm-hmm. I more miserable. Me. Uh, yeah, like, but when I was cooking and I was loving what I was doing, I was like the cool, cool cousin or the cool auntie mm-hmm. or the cool the friend. That's like, oh, that's whatever. I'm exactly. always bringing food wherever I go. If you're doing something, I'm bringing. I made this for you. I'm bringing this down. And imagine like the change of energy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Definitely. So it's even that, just mental health wise for yourself, you're very important. Exactly. You know, you are responsible for yourself. Follow your own passion. Whoever's gonna disappoint, let it disappoint them. They shouldn't have had expectations of you. You're gonna do your own path. You're gonna go your own path, your own process. So. Mm-hmm. How long was it before you went into culinary school? Did you take a break and then just work on the side? Like, time? Um, I feel like I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> no, don't feel It's old. been, like, been almost 10 years. years. <laughs> I'm like, what, how did that process happen again? Um, um, I, my part-time job is that I was working while in school. So when I was in university, I was working too by doing that, but you know, mm-hmm. nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was working already in food, in the food industry okay. as my job. So I already knew that I was around food that was being work that I loved while I was also going to school for like a career that I just knew that was secure you mm-hmm. know like and uh, eventually I was spending more hours in work and less hours in school and more hours in work and then eventually that's how the two and a half years I just stopped going to school I was just like I didn't tell my parents right away that I was not going to school <laughs> I was just working how long did and you wait? <laughs> I mean <laughs> it's okay I'm just I mean okay. I how do I say it I kind of like flunked that half year like that last semester well when i flunked so the two years i passed i was doing really well oh, and then that's half year like the semester i flunked and i didn't say nothing i'm like oh i'm just gonna pay and like we do the classes on my own i got money so i'm just gonna like mm-hmm. go pay for and redo the classes and then come september i'll be back on track you know mm-hmm. and i paid for one of the two classes that i flunked and then i just just didn't do the I just didn't. I mean, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't in me. I'm sorry. And then eventually, when like they noticed my behavior at home and like my my lifestyle, they're like, "You're not going to school. Like mm-hmm. you're we not. Can tell. <laughs> you know, like exactly. you're spending a lot of these outside of the house. Yeah. Like, you're you're not going to school." Mm-hmm. And my sister knew. And also, like I had the whole you have a boy in your life, and he takes too much of your attention. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole different story, right? <laughs> but like that mm-hmm. was a process. Yeah. So that's how I kind of just stopped. And then I just realized I loved what I was doing at work, and it became my, my full time attention. And I had to pay off the student loan. Oh, true. So you might as well. Have ding 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 ding. Yeah. So like me really getting into the culinary field was because I was putting mad hours just into it just into it already, and then different like on different levels. Like there'll be a bistro or a cafe I work at. There'll be an actual like full dining restaurant. Like there's oh, different spectrums of crazy. yeah. So I was just working in different places, that's good. Um, knowing the right people, giving who gave me like couple hours when I needed work you know and putting in that time and be around the food so much that like I was learning so much mm-hmm. so it was me I was working double full time like two full time like I was working a lot of hours because like yeah. half one job was paying off all the That's loans crazy. and all like the debt the, it was like hey my dad might have paid my dad might have paid for half or two thirds but I had a whole third that piled up for two and a half years mm-hmm. so I still had to pay it off and I just didn't want debt to care follow me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, either put two good years in working hard and mm-hmm. be debt free. That's I'm still in my twenties. Mm-hmm. Then just chill. And, and I did chill for a bit. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you all need a break. I didn't pay that for at least two or so years. <laughs> then I started paying. But yeah, <laughs> at least um, you had that time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, then I just spent so much time around food. And then eventually, I was like, I'm gonna do this for real, for real. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. I always said when I was in university that even when I finished university, I was gonna go back just for fun to go to chef school. I knew it was about a year, or year and a half. That's so my mom and like people around me were like, if you knew before you went into university that you were eventually still gonna go to chef school, why don't you just say forget the first one and just go to one you already knew you still had plans to go to? That means that was your initial only passion. Like the one you're going to is because like out of duty. Exactly. You know, like you're 17, you're applying to colleges and universities. You have no other You choice. know, yeah. So, and then yeah, then after that was at least like four years, five years now, like cooking 
and not go to school yet. And then eventually I just went to chef school. Like I went to George Brown. Shout out to GBC. <laughs> GBC carried me a long way. Um, a lot of stuff that you learn you don't really need to use. But um, <laughs> keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> but you must learn history and understand foundations of why we are where we are today. So respect the education. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, so I did that. And yeah. Sorry, what was, just to go back, what was that job that you were first working at? You know, you said you had these. In, while I was in Ryerson? Mm -hmm. My first, first, uh, <laughs> my first, first food job was pretzel maker slash Mrs. Fields. When you go okay. and the, the big pretzels yes. or the, the cookies. That smell. I used to make giant cakeies. Cakeies are like those giant cookies that people would write on. Mm -hmm. I yeah. remember those. Those are blessed. Mrs. Okay. Fields, yo. You knew the black girl that was right at the nest. And it was that, her, guys. That was her. her. <laughs> that was me like, how old was I? I was like 18, 19. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. And then some guy came to poach me to work at Chipotle upstairs. Are you serious? That's yeah, dope. He's, he's like, oh, you know, I like how you work here. You're by yourself. You're really neat. And we're very, we have high standards with our whatever. They're very I'm serious. upstairs. Mm -hmm. So he'll come and talk to me all the time. And that's how, like, then this is how the chain started. So then I went wow. to Chipotle and I worked in two jobs. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, was lying, I was hiding from my main, my first job, the manager, that, <laughs> hey, I have a job upstairs too because mm -hmm. It's actually kind of wrong for someone to come and poach you. Yeah. So I had to be very quiet. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I left because the money was good upstairs. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why. I met problem. so many people, like mm -hmm. so many celebrities kept coming to that location. Are you serious? Okay. Myself. I see. That was her girl. Doing it. <laughs> That makes sense. Yo, I, I love that job. Like, I used to kill the brownies and the cookies. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. My first, like, real love like my oh, first boyfriend oh. met me there and i so and i always remember that that's why i, I love that dad. i was like oh remember when he came to me he was so shy <laughs> and his friend with his friend was so drunk and he's like oh, oh can you help my friend with just give him some coffee because like i don't mm -hmm. know why he's been day so drinking good. and he's like oh, i'm trying to leave he's like i just love that job like i love that job <laughs> it's good memory yeah, good memories, good memories. Good area. yeah love it. That's, it. that's perfect yeah perfect. and then you said that you had jobs where you were at a bistro and then it yeah it's just a lot of different kind of like yeah. setup restaurants was it under um oh, okay different restaurants not just catering or not, no, catering came in last. Okay. Like, I didn't do no catering work or job. Personal catering, like I do for my, by myself now, or with a company, or like like my job at the art gallery. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, I didn't do no catering until the last three years. Okay. Yeah. That is cool. So most of my work was in restaurant mm -hmm. or like a shop. You know? That's great. Yeah. So you had the one year at George Brown College. Uh, it's two years. Two years. It's okay. two years. It's one and a half if you do the straight throughout a year, like throughout the summer. When, oh, okay. yeah. Did yeah. you? So you didn't. I wanted to get rid of it because I was already mm -hmm. a mature student. Right. I was, so like, was like twenty something, something. and yeah. I was like, I'm around these eighteen year olds trying to figure their lives out. Yeah. But, you know, I just <laughs> want to like get through the program and get out. So exactly. no offense to young people, but when you get there, you'll you understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not anything to them. It was more exactly. me. I just felt like I wasn't relating to like my peers i had a few other mature students i think with the chef school thing it's a it's beautiful program because it's not like a right at a high, right at a high school choice mm -hmm. so you always have other ages in the okay. room you That's always good. have like People a 30 something year old a, mm -hmm. a 20 something year old teenagers like you have a mixture so it was That's nice good. just like majority are still teenagers mm -hmm. so I was that like, makes sense. Yeah. yeah so i just wanted to do it fast track get out i was still mm -hmm. working my main job and like i was um I was kind of a supervisor position at the time, okay. so like I had a lot of work. I like literally go overnight work and then wake up for an eight AM class. Yes. And I hate yo, please schools eight AM classes don't make no yeah, sense. Yeah, I don't understand. What like, are you guys doing? No one's cognitive function mm -hmm. is operating at full capacity at eight in, in the morning. I would just I just be happy that I can get out over and done with having eight to eleven. But like, like let me at least wake up at eight to yeah, get ready for the nine o'clock to not even, even for the nine. Yeah, for the time. time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But get it yeah. over and done with. But yeah, yeah. So what? I've always been curious. What is homework like in culinary school? What do you? What do um, you basically doing? like writing sample menus, knowing how to do like inventory, knowing how to do um uh labor costs and all that kind of oh, stuff like, like like you you learn the restaurant business mm -hmm. right it's not that's just good. the hands-on food it's also mm -hmm. like the actual 
like management, like that's culinary right. management, mm-hmm. right? And that's, do you think that that's um, specific to George Brown or do you no, feel like other schools? because the same title yeah. applies to other schools like Centennial okay, and I've seen good. the same thing in Humber, mm-hmm. but um, I think George Brown just has like the best program. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. Um, so keep it's that my mind. opinion, it's not mm-hmm. like it's, it's been proven, but a lot of people do the, say the same thing. Mm-hmm. You still have the exact same curriculum, but I think it's just the environment makes it more enjoyable because they fully built a culinary school right okay. whereas mm-hmm. the other ones are part of their school mm-hmm. so um yeah it's just homework could be that typing up your to-do list for the next so like if you have a lab our lab would be like we're going to be cooking up these different foods you know okay. ahead of time and then you have to write your step by step of what you're going to do your okay. ingredients list what you're going to be using to make the food like it's that's a whole cool. so that's how they test you so that you become a very um, yeah, efficient mm-hmm. cook. So. That's great. Yeah. And that can keep you organized and have everything set for you. Yeah, but the thing is, like, a lot of kids, like, a lot of people coming to the program would also be already working in the field anyway. Mm-hmm. So, like, they would go straight to work from class, and, and then the next day you're back to class, and you, it's due, and you're like, oh, I didn't have to sit at home and type <laughs> up the school. I know how to cook it. So, what you, so you'll pass the lab because you cooked it so amazing. Mm-hmm. It's like, but when he checks, the, he checks the paper, it's like, Ugh. this don't match. Yeah, <laughs> like, or like, where is the paper? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I was, that was a little one, too. <laughs> I was one of those people. I was one of those it's people. It's so good. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like, uh, yeah. But keep that in mind so that you know it's off your list. If I'm a hard worker, but, but mm-hmm. I'm very, like lazy. I was trying the smarter way to do something. That's right. So if it's a risk, I'm willing to take like, oh, that's an extra five or ten percent. I'm willing to like risk off my mark just to make sure I can like go to work and mm-hmm. still show up and at least cook the food. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. Yeah. But like, I don't encourage that for others. Mm-hmm. Like, put the take extra take effort because I put the extra effort. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like. I was already in the field, so mm-hmm. I was just doing it just to say, hey, if I go to like a very higher end chef job mm-hmm. and I'm in competition with somebody, I can say. I have this many years hands on, mm-hmm. and I have this paperwork. Yeah, that's you right. know what I mean. That's why I did it. I didn't do it because I needed it. Because actually, in our industry, like they don't really care mm-hmm. that you went to school. It's just an extra. They even like, care about where you were, who you know, mm-hmm. and can you just can cook. you just cut this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you get the so like majority of the work, like yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. No, perfect. And so after that experience at George Brown, what was work like for you? After George Brown, I just kept cooking, and then. I met some people, they connected me to some other people, I got some jobs, like how the same thing works in the industry already. And like then I got a job. Um actually it was a dramatic change. It was a dramatic shift in life. Yeah. Before it became great, it was horrible. Oh, keep that in mind. Okay, I'll get to I'll do the horrible part fast. I was part of a company for about five years. Um, I'm not gonna mention their name because I just wanna get them no I don't wanna get them no like shade or anything. No, that's okay. okay. We'll keep the peace. For five years, I think we're just stuck in a rut and we're just not growing anymore. You oh, just okay. feel like um you know the sea right here. Yeah, you just feel like you're already where you're at and I think it becomes redundant and I and it could have been a peaceful exit, but I think I knew already that it was time to go and I just wasn't trying to make the move and sometimes when you don't move God forces you to mm-hmm. God will yeah. force you that's to move. Yeah. So listen move. to him. So <laughs> when he gives you one, two, three opportunities. <laughs> Take them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then it just a really bad exit. I think I, it was, we had a dramatic night. It was a busy night. I was running the line. I was in charge for like the rest of the evening. And then um, uh, we had a front of house girl it was not appropriate with with um, our customers. And that I, I care about yeah, you know, the experience. Really, yeah, the experience. And I care about that. And, and it was partly something that I could... Um, no, no, it's something that I was, I would say my position allowed me to check her on it. Okay. You know what That's I mean? Good. And, um, I checked her on it and just like, I guess, word of words and I guess how I said something was not appropriate. Mm-hmm. And when the general manager, not general, but the manager of that location came around and I expressed how I was feeling at the night of her behavior, I said it in a way that he considered was threatening her life. Oh, Maybe I think it's dramatic. <laughs> yeah, long story Sorry. short, uh, we both agreed to disagree on certain things, and I, mm-hmm. I got fired slash quit. Like, it was kind of like, okay, whatever. Either, right. either you do it this way or you don't get to stay, and I say, I'm out of here. Yeah. So it's kind of like, cool. You just, let's, it, yeah. yeah, I'm feeling it. Mm-hmm. And um, that same year, I broke my wrist. I like It was just a whole, like, right after, like, the job, I, I broke my wrist there, and then it ended off of me leaving. 
it's like a workplace hazard situation mm -hmm. um and all these days you traveled and stuff i came back and i got this new i got like went to the uk to see some family came back and then i had this job and this job i met this girl mm -hmm. <laughs> shout, shout out to her, her. she knows to her. <laughs> so i get to this job and it's like okay my life is kind of changing i'm learning uh i was kind of thrown in the fire a little mm -hmm. bit and this new job was very more independent while on a team mm -hmm. so i was used to kind of just like doing the finishing work and being in charge of like other things but not having to do all the petty small work mm -hmm. and this job really had to retrain me and kind of break me a little bit which i really enjoyed because that's what made me who i am now that's okay cool. I, i'll give that job like the, the middle climax <laughs> <laughs> um and i met this girl she was uh, doing a position as garmanje and she's korean and she was so cute. She's like small, whatever. She's like a little, like like moving, like a little, like whatever. She's quiet, but she always like giggle or smile. She's just really cute. I just like had this love for her. I could just feel we had like this like spiritual bond, you know. And right away we just clicked. Well, after we'll hang out all the time. Right? And then we just start hanging out. Um, and even though our communication was not as clear in the beginning, like it was, you could just tell like. I like you, you like me, so let's just hang. Even if you don't say much, exactly. I like being in your presence. You know I what that. I mean? And and um yeah, we became really close friends and eventually one time we were hanging out and she's like, I gotta go back home and I was like, What are you like, mean? You, mean? Right? <laughs> you leaving me? <laughs> what do you mean why are you going back home? Like like, like, like no, I'm like, like you're the Korean version of me. Like uh -huh. you always say that, like I'm like my Korean sister. That's or me. if you guys meet her, she's the Korean version of me, just that I'm more loud. Like I just I would always say that. And then she's like, yeah, like my parents, um, you know, it's time for me to go back home and um, it's time for me to go back home and um, my parents have put enough money and invested in me to go abroad and learn in school in different countries and now they, her mom's a restaurateur, her mom owns many, res her, her mom had owned many restaurants, was very known in Korea, so like, you know, it's kind of like, hey, like, we put this investment into you, come back and mm -hmm. open a business here. I can wow. invest in you here and, like, come and open a business here. So she's like, I gotta go back home and, like, do this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what my parents want, and I think it's time, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool, um, I'm happy for you, whatever. And I said, you know, I'm definitely gonna, I, I kind of joked, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm coming with you. Then be, if you go, I'm going. Uh, we both go. <laughs> that's what I said, right? Mm -hmm. But I was not at all, serious. like, serious. <laughs> and I was like, never thinking last even in my life, <laughs> like, journey. I was like, oh, you know? <laughs> like, if you go, we go. Yeah, like, you know, it's the trauma. Like, thing. girlfriend like, talk, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the banana. Can I oh, eat? So um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then she's like, okay. And I was Let's like, do it. and I was <laughs> like, like, wait, pardon me, what? what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, she's like, yeah. She's like, she's like, how long you want to come for? And I was like, oh, I mean, you open an industry, she's like, you want to come help me run this thing? Do you want to come help me, like, actually open this business and, like, you know, whatever, help me set up? I'm like, yeah, like, of course. Because she needs more pastry and um, pastry, dessert, drink, focus, and I was more savory, like, food focus. Like, you know, like, so... It would be nice to have that contrast when we're doing the menu planning and like deals and flavor profile and like um you know like it was good to have me there you know mm -hmm. and i just really appreciated that offer because it's like no one ever seen me worthy enough to be like i'm gonna go open a business i don't even know what i'm doing but <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if you know what you're doing but come do this with me exactly. you know what i mean like that's really that's nice. respect for real yeah so um yeah she said okay and then I laughed it off and I went home and then we kept talking about it and she's like, okay, this is where you can get cheap flights. Like she started planning and I was like, she's I was like, a real one. Oh, so she's down. She's like, because she's trying to help me because she knew I didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So she's like, and Koreans like, the way their parents are, they take care of theirs. So mm -hmm. even you, won't, you can't feel like, oh, this kind of Korean is a poor Korean. This kind of Korean, they kind of all at a median, mm -hmm. you know, because they're all like, they just know how to live their life and they just can like, you know, like if I don't got the money, my parents gonna pay for it. If I don't, the government's gonna give me a credit card that's like oh, wow. one or two percent interest. That's it's great. If you're Korean, you're taken care of. So like, mm. for me and her, like she's gonna be comfortable when she goes. I'm mm. not. So it's like I'm making sure I can help you out. So she just was already telling me where to look for tickets, where to do whatever. So I go home and I tell my mom, like, so I'm going to Korea. <laughs> I'm just telling just you, just letting you know. I'm not right? asking you, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> You know, I'm going to Korea, I'm going to go do this business thing. And I was just kind of saying it at first, not really taking in what I was mm -hmm. saying. Like and they're all like, people's eyes started like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go, like, my friend's going to, like, my girl's going to go open her own, like, cafe restaurant mm -hmm. thing. 
she asked me to come and help her co co partner and open it. It's not, I don't it's own really it. Good. I definitely don't own right? it. It's not so mine, it's no but, risk but it's a co partner. Yes, yeah, no risk mm -hmm. to me. Whatever. I gotta get up and leave. Gotta get up. And Canadians can go to Korea without a visa for six months. Are you maximum. serious? Yeah. Oh. So I didn't have to even apply for a okay, visa. Right? We have a good relationship yeah. with Korea Canadians. Ah, so, okay, good. We've done well. Yeah, and then eventually it was more like they're not trying to talk me out of it. It was just more trying to understand what I was seeing. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, my kid, my kid, ooh. My kids go to Korea to do this thing, and it's like, oh, it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, like, and then it's like, so first of all, I told my dad, I told my dad very late, closer <laughs> to when I was about to go, because okay. my my dad yeah. is a ex soldier, so he's very oh, like, okay. do, 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 yes, do, do. and already great. like my life has not been a straight path, mm -hmm. so it's like, even though he's cool and he's my bro, and like he's like my he's like my I love him so much, so we can talk like my best friend. Mm -hmm. I still choose carefully when and how I'm gonna give him information. Were right? you scared or was it actually on purpose? <laughs> no, I'm not scared. Okay. That's I passed the scared the day, he, the, the moment he disowned me about the Ryerson stuff. Mm -hmm, true. When that, that situation that. happened, our relationship trajectory completely changed, mm -hmm. right? Because it was more of like, oh, that's how you can deal with me? I'm not daddy's princess anymore. Mm -hmm. He okay, always kind of like never, I wouldn't say he never disciplined me. Like he was just more of like, he was one that spoiled me. Oh, my mom, that's why my mom was kind of had a little bit of resentment toward my dad because it's like, oh, your dad should get away with whatever you want, kind of thing. He will still talk about it. He still, he has still had a temper, but he never had a temper with me. So when that temper happened to me, I realized in my 20s, like, oh, I'm not that little girl or daddy's girl anymore. I'm an adult, you know? Mm -hmm. And my dad literally just was so disappointed. He, he actually, for the first time, shut me out. Like, mm -hmm. I never not had my like my dad on my on my team you know what i mean so that to me was like ooh. so now after when we finally like i had to break the ice because i knew he's stubborn he mm -hmm. would stay he would he just say he will stay mind. the way he was can your, can your parents dads they don't joke mm -hmm. eh? not at all. so eventually my mom is like my mom was kind of more like yeah i'm good for whatever like because she know her my dad like they're not this, they're not on the same page but eventually she realized as an adult she had to like give me good advice as a, as a parent she's mm -hmm. like at the end of the day he's still your dad like yeah, it's disappointing because she had time to like digest it and mm -hmm. get over it. I live exactly. with her. She's my primary parent. Exactly. So it's so like she's, she's seen a lot of the dark things I've gone through or not the great things I've gone through mm -hmm. in a way he's never ever gonna know or experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Definitely. So for her, it's like she's just able to give me advice and be be really chill about like I get where your dad's coming from. I'm not his biggest fan, but this you're gonna have to be the one to like go with your dad and like break the ice mm -hmm. and like just That's try good. to warm up back to him. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that, so like now whenever I tell him anything, it's not because of that moment anymore because now we're good. Now, you mm -hmm. know, we've been, I feel like he and I have a silent understanding that we've been through the worst Precious. in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Like it, it hurt us emotionally both the same way. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like anything now, when I choose to tell you, I just, we're just talking like we're best friends. That's sweet. It's not dad and daughter anymore. Mm -hmm. So that way it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Definitely. I can go at him and rub his head and be like, you know, like, it's just like, mm -hmm. he's my, like my buddy kind That's of thing. Cute. So Definitely. it's not at all scared at all. So Definitely. I just didn't want someone to rain on my parade. Definitely. That I didn't want someone to come vibe. and start saying, oh, why are you going to some other country? Why are you don't open in Ghana? Mm -hmm. why of course. <laughs> It's not, like, it's, it's not me and my money investing in this is somebody investing in me and my friend to do this this is her parents putting their money into it to make exactly. us like play in a kitchen mm -hmm. they'll be built the kitchen they, they built the kitchen it. from scratch they did everything was like it was amazing so it's like i just didn't want my dad to like i didn't want to give him enough time to convince me otherwise or to influence me so i told them when the tickets already booked that's good that's good tickets idea. booked i'm going in three weeks Fair. He's like three weeks for how long? Oh. Half a year. <laughs> Half a year. Are you tell me now. Yeah, I'm telling you now. That's, that's how. It, that's the way it has to and be. And eventually, he just has to support me. He's like, okay, mm -hmm. have fun, be safe. Like, uh, eventually, we're at time to marinate, and we're just been always talking. Mm -hmm. So I just like, Definitely. I just want to have like, you know, where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'll call you. And then when I came back, he was the first person. My daughter this. My daughter that. My I'm daughter. Telling you. And I was like. You used to say the job I wanted to be as a cook was trash. Mm -hmm. Now we're here. Now we're I here. See? I see you. That's that's. See, I came Remember back. That. I came back full circle, guys. Remember, exactly. I, I bought the whole trash <laughs> thing. So, um, back to um, leaving three weeks after telling your dad. Mm -hmm. What was the touchdown like? I flew to the main airport, so it's it's kind of busy, but it's not in Seoul. Like it's not in the main city, so it's not congested. Mm -hmm. that's good. When you get to main city, it's congested. But also, um. But yeah, it was, just, it was a good era. It was fine. It was normal to me. Just a lot of Korean. <laughs> um, 
a lot to, you know, in a Korean country. I mean, right. Korea. Yeah. Um, and, but there was also a lot of foreigners. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was surprised. Cool. First day, yeah. I met a black girl there. Oh. And I was like, oh, oh shoot! shoot! I met a black girl How did you get here? No, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. When I saw her, right away, I felt like, I felt inclined to have to make friends yes. with her. Yes. Because. My, that's how, I'm so glad. But she was black way. American. She was there for the army. Like, oh. Because they have a lot of army bases there. Okay. A lot of American army bases. So, like, when you see people who are not Korean, most times they're there they're for them. Yeah, they're on the okay. army. Or they're there to teach English. Okay. Um, so everybody thought I was there to teach English. I was like, <laughs> all, when everybody heard I was there for that, I was like, what? No one come here for that. Right? <laughs> that's still okay. That's cool. It's like, it's like, oh, you're here to teach English? No. It's like, so. What are you doing here? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're in school? No. No, 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 no. no. Just, you you're just spon- here? You get sponsored to school here? Yeah. Like, all of us? Uh-huh. Like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, it was fine when I touched down. Um, I'll just fast forward it into. Like we're probably gonna go more questions just so we just get the information out there. Like I live more in the mountain in the mountains. I didn't live in the city. Um, I lived thirty minutes from Seoul. I lived in Gapyong. I love Gapyong. Shout out oh, to Gapyong. Okay, okay. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> That's my place, yo. Right here. That's <laughs> odd. Yo, it's it's beautiful. It's eighty percent mountains and trees. Wow. So it's like the air is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, like when you wake up, like. I don't know. The scenery is just mm-hmm. it's beautiful. It's peaceful. Like that. I know the difference when I came back. It's mm-hmm. touch, when you ask me about touchdown. I don't have anything significant to see about touchdown. But coming back, touchdown. Like, why am I here? <laughs> you know, you know what? It wasn't even that bad, but it was chaos for me. Mm-hmm. I felt like you know it's busy and chaotic, and like you know you see pictures of Seoul and yeah. Japan, it's Tokyo. Jam-packed. They're all jam packed. Yeah. but it's not anxiety jam packed. It's just mm-hmm. a lot of people. But when I kind of came back to Toronto, it was like. Too much noise noise. level mm-hmm. like it's like it was too much going on too much chit chat too much drama and i was just like i was like i want to go back to my mountain i want to go back to my mountain yeah because i had one mountain that i cleaned out there and i always know where to locate it when i go so it's like i just want to go back to where like and honestly i found god out there too that's nice. more than like already being part of my life oh do you feel like that's because there was less noise so you have that time yeah from everything was silenced out so you have more and you're also in nature mm-hmm. so like you have There's more time beauty. it's it's like it's beauty like mm-hmm. it's like no it's awe mm-hmm. it's like it's like you kind of like where your chest stops for a second exactly. when like the sun is setting behind a mountain and it's just like <sighs> trees and like it's just like it's like a <gasps> like god that's god i mean that is god i kept saying i'm like oh I'm like, that's God. That has to be. This has to be a, a God feeling. Like, this is nothing I've experienced. Mm-hmm. And I would have an encounter more with him when I spent mornings outside mm-hmm. and, like, just looked at the mountain from where I was living. Mm-hmm. And, like, I would hear him more. So, like, my rebirth and transition was because of me going and isolating in Korea. That's great. Yes, it was a business trip. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was an opportunity. Yes, it was a culinary or career or whatever. But it was way, it turned out to be way more than what I went for. Mm -hmm. What I went for, we didn't end up doing half, after half of the time I was there, we changed the whole concept. We did other things, holistic Mm -hmm. things. It was, everything was just so natural that, like, I brought three suitcases. (laughs) (laughs) Okay? Like, I'm going to live there for six months. And I literally brought... Th- was it three quarters back untouched? I didn't need all that stuff. I was wow. so upset because then I had to pay, I had to even oh, pay excess like because that. of that twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, like, in one of those things where, like, where I was living was just so natural. You didn't need your makeup. Mm-hmm. Maybe once a day, once a week, you'd wear it. Mm-hmm. You didn't need all the, like, their outfits that I brought because, you know, it was this weather and this one match, this one, this. Like, even my girl, at some point, probably was annoyed with me. She's like, I'm going to go put on some brows or something. I was like, because we're, like, serving customers in our cafe now, and I'm just loungewear. Not, and I forgot that, like, okay, no. I, I, I put on proper jeans in the top, but, like, I was just too comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I just realized, like, oh, this is just the most natural. Like, I would live there. I want to buy land that has mountains on it. Do it. Do like, it. Like, that's my wusa. Like, that's my peace of mind. Like, a mountain experience. And also, when you're out there... You're stuck there because you already like your tickets not to whatever. And I said money to the emergency, you gotta come yeah. back. But like, I couldn't leave. And when I was having moments where I wanted to feel comfortable, or I was having anxiety, I wanted to just like come back to my family. Mm-hmm. I was by myself. That's right. It's like you're isolated with God in nature mm-hmm. in a mountain. Like there's nothing else you can do. Just pray, like listen to music, mm-hmm. have some time, and lay still, be quiet, and you hear so much. Like you hear more in silence. Like it's crazy. 
So that's I'm it for me for the Korea. Yeah, the Korea thing, like, I know I don't talk more much about it anymore because I feel like it served its time and purpose. Mm-hmm. And I went through this, like, time of over talking about it because it was such an experience for a black girl, that's Ganyan, mm-hmm. to go somewhere and, like, for chefing. You know what I mean? Like, a whole big deal. But I feel like because of like my encounter with God out there and the fact that it was not even mostly about chefing when I got mm-hmm. there anymore, like I did, I barely chefed out when I was there. <laughs> like I <laughs> didn't so barely any cooking. Like I cooked mm-hmm. for the family that I was living with, like my girl and her family. Like that's what cooking that's I did, it. you know. That's great stuff. Yeah, but I don't talk about it much. There's not much more to go about it because it's more of like the opportunity. I followed my heart. I fell down in university. I picked up in college. Mm-hmm. That is all great, but I think we tie this into purpose and finding your purpose and i think this korea experience for me solidified my purpose mm-hmm. right i was confused for sure that across from i didn't know what i was going to do where i was going mm-hmm. um i knew i was doing something that i, like, I love doing but i feel stagnant like mm-hmm. you know like okay so this is it right. i'm gonna own something i'm gonna cook in a restaurant i'm gonna like what am i I'm gonna mm-hmm. cater like mm-hmm. what am i gonna do one more but it was more of um, it opened doors for where my third career path I'm about to open into mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. which I'm not going to talk too much on, but it is into holistic natural path things. Mm-hmm. Um, that was birthed there, okay. right? So I feel like from there, I've slowly just got into jobs that are secure to pay bills mm-hmm. and that are still food related, but it's not going to be my, my last stop. That's great. Yeah. 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 So, so you, your purpose is mm-hmm. do follow your heart, do what you know you want to do. Do it with a great attitude, do it with passion, do it with love. And in that process of you being in the right place where you're supposed to be, where you're meant to be, you, everything will be revealed to you of where you're supposed to go. That's right. right? Mm-hmm. So when you say, like, how do you find my purpose? How do I know where I'm going? I didn't know. <laughs> Not really know. Let me tell you, I knew what I was good at. I knew what I liked to do. I knew what I knew environments I like to be in. But nobody actually knows until you live life. Exactly. Like you have to live life, and you have to defy odds. Like I respect my parents, and even still, I as an adult, not always go and thank them for things they taught me when I was young. Mm-hmm. I was defiant because a lot of those things actually were good advice. I should have mm-hmm. listened. I could have avoided so much debt, so much heartbreak, mm-hmm. right? But aside from that. Fault, like you have to break their heart sometimes mm-hmm. you have to because if you don't follow if I didn't follow my gut and my true what made me happy in those times they weren't in the best circumstances when I made those decisions but they still led me to the right places being in that place and being isolated in in where I thrived God revealed to me right my purpose or my passion or or no my purpose or where I can work in his glory like where mm-hmm. i can thrive so i'm working towards getting there he told me what it is but it doesn't mean it's right away mm-hmm. right exactly. that's also another mistake people make is that it's been revealed to you your purpose but you don't have the patience to let it manifest mm-hmm. and that manifestation is not i think and i want it and it's going to happen and god told me manifestation is also being practical and putting in the steps to receive what you want putting so in it's the work. putting in the work so okay mm-hmm. Um, Faith without work is that guy. Yeah, I want to own something or whatever. Work with somebody who's owned things. Mm-hmm. Study them. Learn from them. Speak to somebody them, who speak to them. them. Research. Like, mm-hmm. you have to show God in your actions that you're doing things to receive the thing he told you that he's going to give you. Exactly. Right? So, the purpose thing, there's many spectrums to other ways of finding your purpose. Mm-hmm. There's many other ways and things. So we'll it's a big spectrum. It. I know definitely. she will definitely dive into that with other people she will also interview. But but keep it in mind, darling. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. great. But yeah, it was great. Like, and I'm glad you said that because like we don't realize that we may have something that comes out randomly mm-hmm. and it speaks to our senses. Like people love to travel, go somewhere else, and then you never realize where God will take you and how exactly. he'll speak to you. I would have so, never but, seen Korea in my mm-hmm. No, <laughs> right? Like the whole like tunnel vision, tr- mm-hmm. your your vision board, and five years from now right. when I Korea was like, twenty, I was not thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Like I'm telling you, you have to allow life to happen, and you have to follow your gut. Okay, like life will happen in a way you're just like what? Who would have right. thought? I like, found you, especially when you have things <clears throat> planned, and you're like, wait, 
I used to walk by the art gallery as like a regular like cook from other you know doing Mm -hmm. and then oh one day I wonder if I'd ever get to work here or whatever really I'm surprised that question years uh, yeah years later I'm working there so tell us more about that well that was Uh, after Korea Mm -hmm. right I knew like that because Guys, she told me the kind of questions you get before. <laughs> so I <laughs> led the conversation. Fresh, flew into that. You know, that. Thank you. You know no problem. Good segue. Good job. Um, but yeah, like I used to always walk by there. And then I go through this whole life process, this mm-hmm. whole life journey. And um, I come back from Korea looking for a job because my sister's getting married. Mm-hmm. I need work. I need money. <laughs> I have plans to go back to Korea after her wedding. But I just wasn't sure when exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I just want a server job. I had front of house experience. I had bartending experience. Okay. Like, I've, mm-hmm. it's not just the food part. Like, anything to do with, like, the yeah, industry. industry. Yeah. yeah, food and beverage industry. I have a pretty good whatever. That's so I was applying for, like, bartender, server, just to get some cash job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's just one posting that was food related. And I didn't want to be restaurant or, or whatever because it demanded time I didn't have at the, at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to be cooking because I hadn't cooked for a while because we are a whole... I wasn't even lounging. It was like, it was like <laughs> Korea was a whole different experience. So mm-hmm. it kind of, I wasn't sharp anymore for a while. You know what I mean? Like, I think we stopped cooking halfway through our process and changed our, con- right. our thing to more of a cafe. So we didn't need to cook so much, exactly. right? Um, yeah, and then I applied to it. And none of the server or bartender jobs called me back. <laughs> none of that. You know, when I didn't really want them, they were up, like asking me if I wanted to work. But when I need them, they were there. I applied to 20. Oh. Okay? Not, maybe I just wasn't they're trying hard enough. No, no, there's some things that are just not meant to be. Okay. I applied to the AGO one, the only one to right away, two days later. Wow. Like, responded. And I was like, what is this? What, right? what, what's, what's going on? I'm trying to do that. <laughs> right? I love it. He's like, what are you trying to play us? Like, <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. What are you trying to do, mm-hmm. God? You know, like, because I'm not ready to be working in that. I just did it to see if I get it. Like, I wasn't even, like trying to actually work there with mm-hmm. it yet. Just but I remember when I was way younger in the industry, like three years into the industry, I was like, oh yeah, I wonder if I get to work here. Like, you know, walking by it. Right. Just and then I, and then it's like, oh, I got an interview. Okay. Shoot. Like, I'm telling you, God works, yo. Yeah, he likes to. And then eventually, like, why not take it? Like, I never, I might get an opportunity again. Mm-hmm. I think might as, might as well. So I, I took mm-hmm. it, and it was, it was a hard experience in the first six months. Okay. Um, and why do you say that? I'll get into that first in a second, but just getting into the into the art gallery just kind of proved to me that eventually, if you put in the work and you kind of allow God to take, because I was not allowing God to work in my life, even though I was living all these experiences, mm-hmm. like. I was a believer and I was God fearing, but I wasn't strong, you know. Mm-hmm. But eventually, when I did finally let go and let God, then things started moving fast forward. Like That's they were great. just speeding, right? Mm-hmm. So the AGO thing was like, okay, I don't know when I'm going back to Korea, but this is a job I can actually just leave and go back to, to Korea. So I kind of mm-hmm. knew back in my mind I probably wasn't going back when mm-hmm. I secured the job and I passed probation. But so people kept asking, like, are you gonna go back to your cafe? And it's like, no, right? right? <laughs> like I am gonna go back eventually, and I did go back eventually, oh, but great. I just knew that the gallery, the, the art gallery catering department events was important, cook job, great salary, the great benefits and all that stuff. So I was like, I can't yeah, leave this exactly. job. So yeah, so now fast forward to why it was such a hard transition was just because the I would say every new level has a new devil. Mm-hmm. That's right. Anytime you're getting to that level, there's something else that's fighting you because, you know, you're at a difference, mm-hmm. different pace. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So every level has a new devil. And there was just a devil that was in place that the devil was working through someone mm-hmm. um, to challenge me just to kind of throw me off track and just try to, to get me to leave the place. Oh, wow. Because not knowing that eventually years down the line, it was going to be why me thriving there Mm -hmm. so sometimes it's like he's gonna come in when he sees that something good's about to happen Mm -hmm. um which she was the one in charge at the time and she just gave me a hard time and i found out later on down the line there was a whole racial Mm -hmm. issue not just me but other employees there too Mm -hmm. it was barely it was barely um multicultural there there there's probably like one spanish one or two indian i was one or two black you know like Mm -hmm. but i see in my department Definitely, there was more variety in around the whole in the yeah, gallery, room. but in our department it was just a little bit whatever. Mm-hmm. So I found out eventually down the line when she 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 resigned. Oh, okay. So see, it worked out for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was hard. It was hard. Like I got into a good 
position. She demoted me two days before my probation was over. Wow. She was just like, just it's either you choose to get, it's either choose to leave or you take the demotion. Wow. And I was like, oh damn, girl. So I took the demotion because I needed the job, mm-hmm. and I just felt, I don't know, I was just kind of numb. So she said, yeah, I'm not trying to have no job right now, so whatever. Mm-hmm. Then she, she she then she resigned, and then maybe a three months after she resigned, I got my position back mm-hmm. because the one that came up after her knew my worth, right? That's good. So it was just one of those kind of things, and. That's why it was hard, but you have to just persevere. Mm-hmm. Even when it gets muddy and it gets nasty and tough, just stick it through. Exactly. Know who you are, know your worth, and know that someone else will recognize that worth. That is key. That's great. So I'm glad that you're enjoying that experience mm-hmm. now. Um, just briefly, with COVID coming in, how was that? Um, how that shape? Our industry is suffering. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. Food and beverage industry is not doing too well. We're also the only ones that have the big another closure again during the second stage and all this stuff like that. But all the other parts of our industry are thriving. Just like the places that are busy working, they have food spots around that they need active. Oh, yeah. You know, um, film industry, catering. Um, a little bit of it is takeout kind of stuff is thriving but mm-hmm. if you're if it's a dining in a restaurant that's how they were making their money yeah definitely suffering so but it's okay for me i'm okay that's good um, i was just gonna say what have you learned about yourself your next experience or this experience what's going on i learned that cliche yes but life is too short <laughs> uh, but i also learned that it wasn't a bad year for me or experience for me in terms of it was bad in general for the lives lost, but mm-hmm. it wasn't such a bad experience for me in the sense that I had more time with God, That's more time true. with the Word of. I was way in my Bible every day. Me and my mom were watching preaching all the time. Mm-hmm. We're part of the prayer line for the, for at least the first three, four months straight. We were on that prayer line, um, and yeah, it was just really more of zen time you were actually really at peace calm i did all my social media at the very beginning of all this like because it wasn't just corona it was the whole yeah black Black lives matter movement and all the police brutality stuff i just felt disgusted yeah and i felt like the media was just so much on my phone Mm -hmm. so i just deleted everything and i just felt so free because i felt like if you want if i want if you want to reach me you reach me when i want to be reached Mm -hmm. you know that's right you know what i mean like i was very close to changing my number without saying anything to anybody (laughs) like that level of like nomad like i'm still in my same house but i'm just not in the world like you know what i mean um so that's what i kind of did during this time it was a very different experience for me than for everybody else whatever Mm -hmm. i heard from everybody else was either good or bad yes like somebody was either very good on the, on this spectrum or very bad mm-hmm. but for me it was just more like i'm not even on the spectrum at all right just doing my thing yeah like you know what i mean rest in peace to all the lives lost mm-hmm. and yeah. you know may god always be with the families that are mourning grieving and have gone through such a horrible experience mm-hmm. even those who made it out of the covid in our life it still was a hard time for them Definitely. you know and i'm not ignorant that. to the fact of what COVID and coronavirus, all this, what it means and what's been going on in the world, but I just didn't let it into my inner world. I just didn't let it into my spirit. You know what I mean? I just couldn't. I had to numb it out because it was just too much. That's right. You know, so that's good. that's basically all. Hey, girl. Thank you for, you honestly, too. thank you for having me. My pleasure. As your first interviewee. That's her. <laughs> you know, I'm honored and I'm so proud of you for doing this. I feel like this is needed and it's important that you stick true to who you are and you do it your way. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's very authentic, you know? I'm proud of you. Good job. Thank you. A message to the youth about something that you feel passionate about. Go with the flow of life and don't make decisions off emotions. It's hard. It's better said. It's easier said than done mm-hmm. because we are emotional creatures. Um, we are human. We are spiritual and we are human. So there's always that daily battle between your spirit and your human and the, the good thing to do and the, you know, the right thing to do versus the wrong thing to do. Um, but most times when you're emotional, you're more inclined to the wronger things, right? Because there are also things that make you feel good in the moment. That's right. Temporary. Right? The temporary pleasures for, and that, like, that's going to be a long-term headache or a long-term pain later. It's like, I don't want temporary relief or pleasure. Mm-hmm. I want the long-term, I want the one that's going to have longevity. You know what I mean? I want a peace of mind. Definitely. You know? So if you want a peace of mind. Even a decision you make financially at 17 can affect you at 25. Mm-hmm. So just, that's my only advice, is take every day as it comes. Do not rush life. 
Thank you. Do not rush life. Perfect. All right, thank you so much for that valuable information. The show is for the youth, for the young people, for those people who need a change, people who feel even older and need to switch it up. I want you guys to see what's here in the community in Toronto and worldwide. We're going to take this overseas. And I want, I'm want i really grateful for this opportunity to speak to you, allow you to share your message. Let's give you an applause <laughs> for even thank doing you. this. <laughs> yes, I'm proud of her. Like You guys don't know, like... I don't be like that person like five years from now like yeah I was in the, I was in the pilot episode right. that was her you know but like just because she's gonna be doing so many amazing things so I'm so proud of you thank you for having me my pleasure it was a blessing to be part of this experience and just to talk with you and with you guys as well right. and where can we find you um <laughs> just well, to end um, this you know <laughs> um I don't have social media Wow. Uh, sadly, <laughs> not sadly, actually, freely mm -hmm. for me. Um, I just like a mental freedom, and at the very beginning, first quarter of the year, I deleted all of them. Just That's great. we need that piece. You know, like I acknowledge what's going on in the world versus with Corona and with Black Lives Matter and this fight for justice and for health is all in the same time mm -hmm. and it just became mental health overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like it's emotionally overwhelming and mentally overwhelming. Definitely. So I just decided to just unplug out of the world and plug more into Christ. That's great. That's definitely cool. plugged into. I, I definitely unplugged out of the world and I mm -hmm. plugged way more into Christ. So I came out of this when they opened up more. You know, and we went back to mm -hmm. some kind of normal. Yeah. Definitely, like, was on fire and was doing much better. Um, but definitely, like I was saying to uh, Steph earlier, is I will. I'm getting back on social media mm -hmm. in the next we'll week. Soon. In the next week or so, so you'll mm -hmm. see me soon. So anybody wants to reach out, uh, message me, or just talk or chat it up after this kind of like this, you know, interview. I'm always open and free. Keep it positive energy. Keep it godly, and we're good. Um, I she will be attaching Her any information. handles I may have at the mm -hmm. once she posts um, in my information, mm -hmm. and you guys can just like. Find me there. That's right. Yeah. I'll post her in the comments. And if at that time she's not here, that's okay. You'll see her again in our Instagram. Yeah. Instagram I'm fully gonna be supporting this whole movement. <laughs> so like y'all don't always be seeing me. We'll do a part two, guys. There's more to Salome, trust me. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I know that you're tuning in virtually, but I'm so honored to have you guys here. We'll see you on another episode. At that time, I had no intention of being a teacher. Mm -hmm. Just enjoying the. I just enjoyed the. I stopped the computer software, computer hardware, and I went for media.